Hello, Future Food Cast listeners. We're so excited to have our food enthusiasts out there once again for a, an episode of our podcast. And today, uh, the thought leader that we're interviewing is really on the front end of the food chain. His name is Adrian Ferrero, and he is the co founder and CEO of Biome Makers. Welcome to the podcast, Adrian. My pleasure to be here today. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. We are interested here about technology, trends, and innovation that's going on in the food space. And your company is really on the front end of what's going on with some innovation in the uh, food space. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, I, at Biomakers, in essence, what we do, we connect the life of the soil into the digital world. Because that was a, a missing piece that we realized uh, we were lagging on information on everything happening in the soil at biological level. Uh, we were lagging on bioindicators. And it happens that in the soil, we find the most reliable and interesting bioindicator in nature, which is the community of microbes. So the community of microbes called the microbiome, it's at the same time a natural biosensor and also uh, plays a, a, a crucial role in, in plant growth. So everything happening in agriculture, uh, microbes are the, the key pieces no? doing their, their role. And we use different technologies to be sure first we're able to digitalize the biology of the soil using the DNA of the bacteria and the fungal species in the soil. And then we compute the data in a way that we can really understand how these communities uh, impact the plant growth. And this is what we've done at Biomakers, uh, the big crop technology. And many farmers, many agronomists, many input manufacturers are currently using it to really well optimize farm operations. I did not realize that soil has a DNA. Can you... <laughs> What exactly does that mean? Is that the makeup of all of the microbes that are in there? Yeah, in the same way that the gut microbiome that we have in our body is essential for, for us no? in, in different ways. So we're able to feed our body because we have a bacteria in, in our guts and we're able to care, you know, protect our body because of different microbes as well. So in the soil, it happens pretty much the same. At the same time, uh, the soil is the largest reservoir of uh, microbial species in the world. So we need, hopefully, we, we learn how to care for that, those communities, this key biodiversity, and they, they, they are important for us. They are important for the whole planet. Without them, we'll not be able to, to, like, to live. Well, now, how did you even get started in this business, Adrian? Because it's just different thinking about soil DNA and the microbiome and all of that. How did you even get started? Yeah, actually, it's kind of curious, right? When you talk about genetics, uh, you talk about advanced computing and then how to apply that in, into agriculture. Well, our story as entrepreneurs starts in our city. We are originally from Spain, the both founders, the two founders of Biomakers. And we're from the same city in the northwest of Spain, where sugar beets and corn are really important. But we did not start in agriculture. We started in human health. Our first company was uh, the first genetic diagnostic center specialized in human diseases, uh, mainly hereditary cancer, using a technology called DNA sequencing. That is technology that allows to read or generate digital data from the DNA uh, in a different way, you know, more efficient, faster, and more accurate. So that company was really successful. Uh, we sold that company and we, we decided to apply the, the same personalized medicine concept into agriculture because everybody's talking about precision agriculture. But what we realized is that we needed to have more personalized agriculture. And for that, DNA technologies to utilize this community of microbes, the natural biosensor was going to play a crucial role. And then in 2015, we were lucky to join the corporate accelerator program of Illumina, the largest genetic company in the world. Uh, they were based in San Francisco. So Alberto Acedo, the other founder and me, took the backpack, traveled to the Bay and started this biomaker story. Took your backpack to the Bay. I like that story. <laughs> I'm sure you had more than a backpack, but maybe not a lot more. <laughs> maybe not a lot more. Um, so this, this data that you get from the soil, then how is that helpful? How can 
you know, ag, this seems like ag tech, the ultimate, finding out the DNA of the soil. I mean, that's very specific. And then how is this information useful? What do you do with that? Well, it's been a journey as well to understand the value because at the end of the day, we're, we're bringing a new dimension into, into agriculture. I mean, this new layer of data. And at the beginning, we didn't know very well how to use it. We have some ideas but it's been by working and interacting with the different clients, the different players in agriculture to realize what was the main interest for them or how to extract the value from, from all this data. And it happens that it's not about uh, identifying the communities that are in the soil. So meaning at taxonomic level, naming all the bacteria and all the fungal species that are there, but understanding also two dimensions, uh, how these communities impact the growers, okay? And also uh, what are the ecological relationships in these communities? So understanding these two dimensions, we can optimize or help farmers and agronomists to optimize the fertilization plants because Instead of just assuming that they have biological processes in the soil that are going to benefit the plant growth, uh, suddenly they can identify and quantify the different pathways that are going to condition how the different nutrients are going to be available for the plants. Uh, at the same time, stress adaptation, hormones, uh, production, and disease risk are different dimensions we are helping farmers with. So you can not only help with what's healthy in the soil and going to be promoting maybe additional growth or quicker growth or healthier plants, but you can also maybe forecast a little bit uh, these, these things are going to cause problems in the future, or maybe some diseases happening so that they can take action either way, you know, to prevent possibly if they know at work. Yes, yeah, Sally, it's not just about having a healthy soil. But it's clear that a healthy soil delivers healthy food or healthy plants, no healthy crops. So we, we really like the, the statement from the USDA that only living things can be healthy. So when we talk about soil health, what we need to measure or to understand is what is alive in the soil. And these are mainly the microbes. And as I mentioned before, they play a crucial role in all the plant interactions pathways. And this is what uh, we help. It's not about just um, activating all the pathways, but really starting to play smartly with the different pathways, the different mechanisms, the different bioactivities in the soil to unlock all of them that are beneficial for the plant growth and also balance all of them. Because when you have a good balance in the soil, well, you might have pathogens in the soil, but you might have a really low risk of having a disease in the, in the field. So having this balance is what is crucial when we talk about soil health. This is really an evolving technology, it sounds like. You're learning with the growers and the manufacturers of maybe the, the products that might be used in the soil of how best to balance what's there. Am I understanding that correctly? That's right. And uh, well, initially, what we, if you see our initial reports, they were just a list of microbes. And we were saying, these are good, these are bad. So green and red. And then we realized that that was not the way to go. When we started to uh, estimate the functional potential of this community, then people started to receive higher value out of the results that we were delivering. And then the question was, okay, now that I know that my phosphorus pathway is blocked, how can I unblock it? So what do I do? And then we started to, well, we say, we don't know, nobody knows actually. So the best is to start, what would you do if you know this? Uh, is there any biological input that you can use for that? Is there any farming practice that you can change to you know, uh, change that specific pathway? And this is a learning process that has generated a lot of uh, information for us, a lot of, uh, we call it success cases, because anytime you learn is a success. Mm -hmm. And now we are opening this access to all the agronomists with a program that we call it VCA, a Biological um, Control Advisor, 
and uh, all the resources, all the learnings that we have so far, are all the resources are uh, available for them and they can utilize this. At the end of the day for us as a company, it's good because more people engage into this new dimension are going to be demanding our services. But what is even more interesting is the overall outcome, no? the total outcome that we are going to have, which is, well, farmers managing or uh, using farming practices that are going to be more uh, efficient, more sustainable. And at the end of the day, that means uh, better crops, healthier crops, and more money into the farmer pocket, which is also very interesting. Absolutely. So this BCA, is, is that a service that you provide? So, or, or is that something you're certifying other people as? We are helping people to learn about uh, this dimension. It's uh, free of charge. It's open. Anybody can apply. Actually, BCA is a, a, a game for us because it has this uh, biological dimension, but it's also big crop advisor. So it's kind okay. of a <laughs> game. Yeah. So those are the people who, well, we are referring to them, to our clients uh, in the moment they want to well, decide what to do in the field. What we are doing at the same time is working with input manufacturers to understand what is the impact of the different solutions that they are offering to, to agriculture, to the whole sector, to the whole industry. Because when it comes to functional claims, uh, there was not visibility, no certainty about how to do certain claims that were related to these pathways. And we have a specific program that helped them to generate data, enough data, to, to understand with a scientific driven approach how to unveil all the impacts caused or you know the, the from from the application of the different inputs okay so, that's so how we are learning yeah so if i'm understanding that correctly if i'm maybe a manufacturer of some kind of soil conditioning product that i'm going to put on the soil and i'm saying my product the output is a i don't have any proof of that but with your data you have the pre-soil condition then i put my product on it then you can get the data afterwards to actually say if my product was providing that output or not. Is that right? Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. And, and also uh, the, all the manufacturers have been doing trials, infill experiments, uh, always every season. But what is new now is that they can generate data uh, developed by a third independent party, which is biomakers, to mm -hmm. really well uh, understand. We are not interested in saying this is good, this is bad because there is no good and bad. There are specific solution useful for certain situations. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to really help to make a match between the grower needing a solution and the right solution. So right now we're working with over, I would say 85 different uh, input manufacturers and we're profiling their solutions. Some of them are really big, others are medium size and others are really local or regionalized. And it's amazing because when you see the, the impact of, of those applications under different conditions, different situations, different crops, you, then you understand when that solution is going to work the best. And this is amazing. Yeah, because you're, you're not limited to one area. You're all over the world, aren't you? As far as your reach, you don't re you're not limited by geography. That's right. Uh, when we started Biomakers, we realized that we have a worldwide opportunity and we want to become a, a reference and help agriculture in, in general. And today we are operating in over 40 countries. So yes, we have many clients all across the world. Uh, I would say most of the crops and really crops that we were not expecting at the beginning because our initial plan was, okay, let's grow according to the market opportunity. So let's start working with those crops that are bigger. But at the end of the day, we are just, uh, as people come to us, we are working with them. And we are amazed, not just the traction we are having in US, also in Europe, where we have a subsidiary, but also the alliances that we are having in different locations, for instance, Latin America, People wanted to build also in-house uh, facilities to use the big crop technology. For us, it's great because that makes the technology available and accessible for everybody. 
Africa, Latin America, and right now we're negotiating also in Asia uh, some deals. So yeah, yeah, it's growing and happening really quick. Adrian, that is really exciting. And you mentioned sustainability in part of what you were saying. And, and I can really see that if we're able to maximize our usage of the resources that we already have here, as far as the ability to grow, the ability to optimize our soil, because it's different all over the world. We have different climates. We have you know, different weather situations. The makeup of the soil is different. I'm sure you've seen that. And um, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us on the sustainability side? I, I just can imagine that it's going to have a big impact being able to use your data and make informed decisions. Actually, uh, you're right, uh, stating, stating that uh, every environment is different, for sure. And uh, initially, when we're looking at the, the soil microbiome from the taxonomic point of view, we realized that it was going to be very difficult, you know, to, to find a common answer useful or valuable for all the, the growers across, across the world. But uh, when we started to look at the soil from the functional perspective, then we realized that we could compare different soils, different situations, different conditions easier. Because let me just give you an example. If you compare the, the Brazilian rainbow forest with the Australian rainbow forest, they are completely different from the taxonomic point of view, but the biological processes happening there are pretty much the same. Uh, plants spread, animals eat. So all the ecological activities in those ecosystems, in those environments are the same. So when we talk about agriculture and talking about uh, corn, soy, rice, wheat, those crops that are grown worldwide or even more specific like citrus, almonds, you know, different crops, then you can really understand what is impacting the growth and the yield, uh, well, the disease as well, the risk, all, all the variables that are important and relevant for, for farmers. And it's also true that when we talk about sustainability, we have to bear in mind three, three dimensions of sustainability because usually we think sustainability as environmental sustainability, but there is also the social sustainability. This is important, no? and that's the reason because in certain areas of the world, the agriculture has been mm, stopped kind of, no? because they were uh, going against certain natural resources that were essential for the whole planet or to keep the balance in the whole planet. But also uh, the third dimension will be uh, economic uh, sustainability. Those are the three dimensions that are important. For sure, uh, anything has to be sustainable from these three dimensions. But what is important, when, especially when we think about how to use our technology, for, for better, no? what is the, the positive side effects of using the technology, which at the end of the day, today, many people is already concerned about the climate change and the relevance of uh, carbon sequestration, for instance. This is really a trending topic, a hot topic in the whole industry, no? how to lower the amount that we emit in carbon and also change, no? and in agriculture, we have that opportunity. We can move from a carbon emitted uh, agriculture into a carbon sequestering agriculture, which it's a goal and it's easier. So understanding what is happening there, what is happening in the soil, we can optimize the use of certain inputs, mainly agrochemicals. And right now, well, uh, I will say the whole industry is already aware of that because of the cost of fertilizers, you know, the different situations happening in, in the world are impacting the price of uh, agrochemicals, chemical fertilizers. So farmers are forced to really well decide where they really need to use those inputs. And if we utilize the biological processes in a smarter way, then we can reduce I mean, we've seen reductions up to 40% of uh, agrochemicals in a field, and we've seen increases of 4 to 20% yield in certain crops in certain regions. So there are opportunities. Uh, now technology is here to help. Data are available, and uh, it's our role to make the data as efficient as possible. It's not just about deploying data 
and then let people play with the data. It's about deploying value, deploying uh, useful, actionable insights. And this is what we are really obsessed, you know, how we can close the cycle from delivering data into uh, helping farmers or agronomists to make a smarter decision. And if we are able to really, by working with all these manufacturers, connect, well, this farmer, this soil, this specific field, it will benefit from apply these specific solutions. That will be amazing because then we can really go into a personalized agriculture, which at the end of the day is the, the goal that we have as a company. That's very exciting. Thanks for all that information. And, you know, I read an article that you were talking about all the data that you have and how the security of all that is really, really important to you. And being a good steward of the data that you're collecting and, and really using that in, in the good way and to help find solutions. And that's a lot of what you were just talking about right there. Is there anything else about the security of the data or how that's handled that you'd like to share with our audience? I don't know too much about your system? Well, uh, what we realize is that we have a responsibility. We have right now the largest database of soils, soil microbiomes uh, coming from agriculture in the world. We have identified over 10 million of taxonomic units. And just for you to know, humans have been able to name around half million, 300,000, 350,000 bacteria and around well, less than 200,000 uh, fungal species. So you can imagine the, the level of information that uh, we're storing. But what is more important, and this is crucial, especially when you start working with manufacturers, but also with growers. I mean, the regenerative agriculture movement is amazing. They love to share information, but they are also very careful, very concerned on what they do. No? And they want to keep that as a, as a treasure, as a value. So we, want to, we, need, we need to ensure that uh, this information is secure first. I mean, all the uh, safety measures that are available on IT systems, and we've seen some breaches of security in, in certain platforms. So we wanted to avoid, and we have a, an amazing team of developers that are creating different levels of security and also uh, separating the pieces of information to be sure that if anybody is able to access to certain piece or certain part of the information cannot get the whole into the whole system. So security is, is important. And also this can be conflicted on how we learn and how we share. So aggregation and anonymization is also important. But what we realize is that many people is open to share data. Uh, and this has been a great learning. We launched an, an initiative called Fields Forever, and we were uh, supporting different well, mainly researchers, but also farmers and corporations on, you know, their R&D or their uh, questions or uh, their experiments. And all of them are publishing the results and opening the data. But just for give comfort to our clients, and we work with really big companies and they're really careful and concerned on data privacy, but also with the small ones, no? because it's only just that relationship, um, we have set all the measures to be sure that data are separated, data are secure, and we will never open those, that information to, to third parties. I, I was referring at the beginning that we come from the human health sector, you can, and also in Europe. So you can imagine the level of confidentiality we were dealing with. We're receiving human DNA sample. We were doing the, the screening, the mutational screening for hereditary cancer, and then we have very important information. So we have to be very, very concerned, very aware of, of the measures to protect the privacy of the data. So we just bring the same methodology to biomakers. Yeah, so that was, that was kind of an easy place to come from to think about securing the data and using that in a responsible way. Uh, but you mentioned supporting research and, and then having the paper, you know, some different research projects that are going on because you at Biomakers do have several initiatives happening there. And I think this, the research piece of it is one of those and you have others as well, correct? That's right. We love public exposure. We love public validation as well. We are fully aware that uh, what we are, our value proposition is new and people need to trust it. And in order to create trust, the, the best way is to talk to researchers. I mean, they are great and <laughs> they are the worst sometimes because they go and uh, 
<laughs> no mercy at all. But the good thing is that once they understand what you're doing, you're fully transparent on your limitations. No, that's also we don't have all the answers at this moment. Hopefully, with the time, <clears throat> we'll have more and more information, more and more outcomes, and the technology is also learning continuously as uh, we grow and we, you know, challenge the system with new situations. So yes, uh, working with researchers, uh, working with the industry for us is important because if we want to change agriculture for better it's important that we do it together I mean, we can be the the trigger to create a change but unless everybody change or support the change the change is not going to happen so yeah mm -hmm. that's the reason because we do a lot of work with researchers universities associations you know, all kind of players yeah and the whole goal is to be able to get better and better at what you're trying to do, what your mission is and getting the information and figuring out the best way to use that and, and just helping move things forward as far as innovation with soil and growing um, up all of our plants. Yeah, we are really lucky to have, let me say the best investors ever that really understand uh, our strategy and really understand that this company is going to grow by creating an impact. So we don't need to be, <laughs> we're a company, so we are for profit company, but uh, we don't need to be very aggressive on corporate strategies because finding the balance between commercial activity, posture, reputation, I mean, the, the market is completely new and we need to build that market. Nobody was asking for biological soil tests or functional soil tests before or nobody was really looking at this dimension before biomakers came here. We need to keep pushing, keep growing this market opportunity, make people aware of that, and we'll be very successful as a company. So that's great that you don't have such a pressure. Of course, time is always uh, a concern no? uh, for any startup. Um, but we can say that especially since, uh, well, 2018, when we launched commercially, the big crop technology, we've seen a very good rate of growth continuously, um, creating that position and being very open on what you do and what you can do, you know, and finding these win-win situations with our clients, I think has been a very good success. Yeah, I think, I think I'm sure that that has really led to you being able to expand your company reach and the information reach, uh, obviously, the, being the largest provider or, or holder of the information that you have. Uh, but you also are helping the farmers to understand how their practices are. Don't you have some kind of rating uh, where you're helping the farms to know, you know, where do we stand as far as our functionality and, and how can we do better? like on a rating scale, is it right? I love that you have all the information. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that we realized is that uh, delivering agronomic value to our clients was amazing. But there was a question we were not able to answer previously, and especially for the owners of the farms or even the, the brokers, the distributors of the, of the crop. And well, if you are a regenerative farmer or you are a, a farmer, a grower who is trying to do things, when I say do things, I mean like the practices, being greener, more efficient, you know, enhance certain values, positive values that the society appreciate. At the end of the, the day, you want to capitalize that no? and differentiate yourself in the market. So what we realize is that if we are able to understand the ecological structures of the microbes in the soil, we're able to measure the impact of humans in those communities. Then we did a couple of experiments and realized that actually there was a pattern and we developed certain algorithms to measure it. So there is this program that we call it a big crop rate, and it's a rating system that measures specifically the, the intensity, let me say, of human interventions in the field. Meaning that if at the end of the day, as a result of your farm operations, you haven't been interacting a lot or influencing a lot 
in the soil, in the field, then the soil, the microbes are going to reflect it and the community is going to look, let me say, you know, more wild. While if you make a lot of interventions like plowing, uh, agrochemicals, you know, the, a lot of distortion in that ecosystem, so the community is going to reflect it. And those are the two extremes. We use burned soils from after wildfire as the most uh, influenced soil because human intervention, whatever event is. And in the opposite one is the forests where humans actually don't do anything. So in between what we found is that conventional farming falls somehow in, uh, there are really some conventional farmers that are doing farm operation very efficient and they're really green. There are others that are really being very harmful to those ecological processes. And at the end, they're breaking the balance and they're going to uh, face problems not far in the time. And then we have those organic, biodynamic, regenerative farmers, and they position. So yeah, we have this, this program, and there are some corporations that are already using it. And we were really surprised that coffee, cacao, and banana growers were the first one very, very interested on, on this solution. And those are the ones we are currently working with. Okay, that is just fascinating. Thank you for sharing that whole program with us. I didn't even know anything like that could exist. And really without your data, it didn't exist before because you didn't know, we weren't measuring that. Like you said, it's, it's a new segment of, of really the industry. If you look at mo most of the certifications that try to measure the sustainability of the farm, at the end, uh, they are based on, let me say, traditional parameters and a checklist. Uh, we don't need that. We just need a soil that we are collecting or somebody on our behalf is collecting and soil is not going to lie. That's what we say. It's not a certification itself. It does not compete with certifications because that's a completely different world, but it's a metric that can be integrated in certain certifications and it can be just used by itself if somebody can benefit. Yeah. yeah. And I want to say, just stick to the facts. I'm a numbers person. Let's get the facts. Like it's not a check. What do you see here? What do you think? It's the actual data that you're looking at and the soil is telling the story. And some people is happy with the results. And so, and, and we have really nice when we were doing the beta tests with certain clients I mean, uh, we have those that were regenerative and they were like, we are regenerative. And then we were like, Hey, the rate from your farm in this season, it's a little bit lower and they say, yeah, I have to do this in this area because I have this problem, which, which is fair. I mean, because at the end of the day, a farm is a, a business and they need to eat. So depending on the, the problem, you have to react. No, this is what we say. And we have the opposite one, uh, people who didn't have an issue and they were over applying certain and they were like, hey, your rate is going down. Why don't you just stop it? You don't need it. And you also see the agronomic indexes. There is no risk. There is a, some blocks on nutrient mobilization. So perhaps you need to change certain practices into more biological friendly practices to activate certain mechanisms. This is a new word. Sorry. Uh, here no. I can just keep talking about different cases and perhaps it's not the goal. No, no, it is the goal because really, Adrian, the one of the main goals of our whole podcast, the Future Foodcast, is to get the information out there and about new things and innovations. And you have certainly provided our audience with just a lot of information to digest today. And I really thank you for that. Is there anything else you would like to share with them before we go? Well, uh, the only comment that I will say is uh, don't be afraid of technology. Technology has shown for, for a long time that can help societies to do better. And the second comment is that we always think uh, in farmers, like very traditional, old-fashioned sector, is not anymore in that way. Uh, people uh, is really sophisticated. The farmers are really well trained on everything they do. They really want data on um, what is the impact of everything they do. So just for, for the people who is not as I involved into agriculture, we, we have a really nice future coming. And hopefully this is not going to compromise the, the food that we need because it's clear that we have challenges on the table, 
but working together, utilizing technology and being careful on everything we do, uh, we are going to achieve it and succeed for sure. Well, Adrian, thank you and your co-founder for working so hard to create biomakers. And I can't wait to see where things go in the future. Really appreciate you being on our podcast today. Thank you. Pan has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time and give us, giving us also a place to share everything we do. Thanks for listening to Future Foodcast. Future Foodcast is powered by Farm to Plate, the leading food blockchain platform. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to stay up to date with the very latest innovations in the food industry. Thank <laughs> you.